This video is sponsored by Altium. Hey guys, in this application, we are going to be coding a fall detection app using YOLO v7 pose estimation. So let's get right into it. So the objective here is to detect when the person falls. Now just remember that not everyone has an Apple Watch for fall detection. And even if you do have some sort of wearable, you're not going to be wearing it all of the time and you may feel uncomfortable and want to take it off. So that defeats the purpose. So assuming that the person being watched has accepted the privacy policy, you know, that they are being watched 24-7 for the benefit of their well-being, then we can go ahead and implement the solution which involves detecting whether a person has fallen or not. Then once the computer vision model has detected that a person has fallen, it can then create an alert to a caretaker so that the patient may be taken care of. I mean, they can receive care. So let's take a look at how it works. Now, this is a person standing, if it's not already apparent, versus a person that is not standing i.e. a person that has fallen down. Now for argument's sake, we're going to assume that when the person is in this orientation that they have fallen down and not just lying down, right? We're just going to make these assumptions for the simplicity of this tutorial. So we can create bounding boxes around these people using person detection in addition to pose estimation where we can get the height and width of the person. So looking at this at face value, we can see that when a person is standing, the height of that person is much larger than the width of the person unless you get a very short and very broad person for which we assume that is not the case for this tutorial and if they fall over then the height becomes smaller whereas the width becomes longer in this case now we can simply use object detection for this but having a pose model we can have additional checks to confirm that a person has fallen or not so going back to the formula or the formula for falling so essentially we're going to say that the height minus the width if it's greater than zero then the person is standing because if this if the height is large enough minus the width you'll have a positive value which means that the person is standing and if it's the other way around where h minus w or height minus width is less than zero then the person has fallen so this algorithm is fairly simple you can even visualize it as if h is on this side and then w is on that side so if height is bigger than width then the person is standing and if it's the other way around where height is smaller than width then we can say the person is on the ground Cool, so now we can get into the coding part of fall detection. The industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium 4 designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. Cool, so let's get the code. So you are here in YOLO v7 course, which is part of YOLO Plus, And this is lecture 7.4, fall detection. Now, if you head over to the download section, you'll see three files, which is pose estimation, fall detection starter.zip and this is the file that we're going to use for this tutorial right here right now and for whatever reason your tutorial does not work you can click on this file over here to download the final files and this will include all of the code that you need to run it without the hitch and you also find the slides to this tutorial cool and if you're taking this tutorial anywhere else you can check out the vision store at store.augmentedstartups.com and you'll find this project right over here so this is yolo v7 post estimation for fall detection and this is a pro lecture and people who are not part of YOLO Plus will have to purchase this project and the files are more or less the same. Great. So let's continue. So download this file. Once downloaded, you'll have all of these files which you should be familiar with from the previous lectures. The only difference is we have a short little document that will tell you how fault detection works. I've already explained it earlier, but just for your reference. We also have an icon over here, which we will be using for our fall detection. It is a pretty cool icon in my opinion. You can also check out the demo over here. 
So before we get into that, let's check out the file that we will be working with, which is falldetectionsdata.py. Let's rename it to just falldetection.py. Right. Now you can open it up. I'm working here in PyCharm. You can use any IDE that you want. So first of all, we are going to be importing the same old libraries. We won't change anything here for now. Scrolling down, we are mainly going to be working in section two, which is to load our fall icon. And also in section three, this is where we'll be coding our fall detection app. So as you can see, it will be less than 20 lines of code, so it won't be too long. So yeah, let's get started. So in order to load our icon, we are just going to say icon equals cv2 dot I am read. It's supposed to be a dot. And we're going to call up our icon, which is this one over here. Icon3.png. We can just drag and drop it right over there. You can have it like that, or you can have it like that, whatever works. Right, yeah, and that's section two, loading our full icon. It's as simple as that. Let's go into a bit more complex coding, which is section three on fall detection. So over here, we are gonna establish our threshold. So we're just gonna call it thra for now. And we're gonna say frame underscore height divided by two plus 100. And then we're gonna say for our index in range of output dot shape and zero. Don't forget our colon over here. Then we're gonna get our key points and say that is equal to output of our index. We're gonna get that key point seven and we're also going to do a transpose. Next up, we're going to plot our skeleton. Skeleton, key points. We're going to get our image, our key points, and three. KPTS, this should be correct. Oh yes, I forgot to put it up here. Key points, right. So the key points that we get there, we're going to plot our skeleton right over here. Now we need to get our x-min and y-min of our bounding box. y-min equals output of our index to, and then we're going to say minus the output idx and 4. So this is going to be divided by 2. Then we're going to do the same thing again. So I think we can rather just copy this for y min, right? So now we're going to get our index and instead of two, we're going to have three. And then we're going to get the output instead of four, we're going to get five divided by two, right? Now we can do the same thing, but for x max and y max. So we can change it to max and max right so this will be more or less the same it'll be output idx 2 plus but we'll say plus output of idx 4 divided by 2 and we just need to change this over here right that is simple enough now we can get our points which is p1 equals the integer so int of x min and also the int of of y min let's copy this also for p2 and this will be x max and y max now we're going to calculate our height and our width and we're just going to call them dx and also dy. So dx equals int of y max, sorry, x max, and that will minus 
x min and then we're going to do the same so we're just going to copy this over and equal that but this will be now y max and y min so if you're not understanding what we are doing here so let me just draw it for you in paint so say we have our image right over here right our coordinate system is like this we're going to have zero and zero and this will be let's say uh, max width of the image sorry let's let's call it image width image width and image height great so now say if we have detected an object over here right now in order to get the height we need to get points one and points two same thing for the y so we need to get let me just write it down here so point one in the x actually let's say in the y and then this will be point two in the y direction so that will be along this axis over here and then by saying p2 y minus p1 y we will get our dy so that will be dy which is what we are calculating over here so this is as you can say y max minus y min so let's set this as y min and y max now everything that we are doing here applies directly for dx so right over here we're going to have dx let's just make this in red and we will have our lines here this will be x max minus x min cool make sense let's continue all right so now let's continue to cx so this is if we want to get the center so int which will be x min plus x max and all of that divided by 2 we're going to copy this this is actually supposed to be x my bad all right let's see x uh, sorry cy and this will be y min and y max divided by 2. i really don't know why it creates additional spaces when i paste who knows this is one of those unsolved mysteries of the world okay now we need to put in our icon where we're going to say cv2 dot resize our icon and the way we're going to do this is by saying icon and we want to put it as 50 50 and we're going to set our interpolation equal to cv2 dot inter underscore linear cool now we can calculate the difference between our x and y so we can say difference equals dy minus dx dx cool we're going to say ph equals get underscore coordinates and we're going to pull in our key points and that is key point two right now we can put in the condition that will state if our height is smaller than our width then we can state that it is a fall so let's go that in right now so we're going to say if the difference is smaller than zero we can say that and int of ph is higher than our threshold remember we set our threshold over here it's higher than that threshold so we can put that in this should actually have a bracket over here and that right okay cool close of that brackets and we can say or the difference is smaller than zero all right so i think yeah we, we're just missing the colon over here great now we can draw our border draw border we put in our image we're getting our points one points two we're going to put in our color which is 84 61 and 247 there's a few other parameters 25 and 25 
Cool, so now we have the border for our fall detection. So essentially what this does is instead of returning your boring rectangle bounding box, we're going to return a very cool rounded rectangle, which is next generation <laughs> Apple-like border. So rounded corners is the way to go. Okay, next we're going to say I am equals image dot from array image cool and then we're going to say draw equals image draw dot draw and then I am cool now we need to say draw dot rounded rectangle and we essentially going to state cx minus 10 and then cy minus 10 this should actually be a comma I'm going to say CX plus 60 and then CY plus 60. Cool. Now we can fill equals with the color and that color is exactly the same that we have up here. Copy and paste. Cool. Now we're not yet done. We just need to set our radius to 15. You can set your radius to whatever you want. 15 for me, it just happens to work. Cool, so we are almost done. So we're going to say image equals numpy.array. We're going to also put in our image. We're going to say image. So we're going to say cy to cy plus 50. And cx to cx plus 50. 50 and this is our icon cool so let's see if all of this works so the only other things that we do is we are going to display our pre-processed image right over here and then up here we pre-process our frame so that we can perform our fall detection on this image so let's save that now we need to run it and the way you run it you go into our folder into our readme file First thing we need to do is to activate our Conda environment. So we can see Conda activate Yolo v7 pose. All right, and now this one is from the previous tutorial. Let's see if you can figure it out. The way we're going to do this is we're going to change this to full dash diction.py. Our source will be our input video, which is here. And that is called full.mp4. We want device zero, so we can write it on GPU and we don't need curl track anymore. We can delete this. If you want the skeleton, we can draw the skeleton if you want to. Let's just run it without for now. Cool, so I actually forgot that we need to change our directory. Let's just go back, copy all of this, and say cd change directory. Let's try running it again and see if it works. Now, just remember for this to work, we need to have our model, which is this one over here. So you probably got this error over here. You probably received the same error. It's just a simple typo. So we're gonna change that to that. All right, let's save it and run it again. Okay, it is starting up and let's see if it works. And it does, look at that. So, the person is toppling off, it's detecting multiple people, but when one person falls down and height changes, do we get that change? Do we detect? There we go. It works. Yes. So this is a fairly long video. It will take time to process, but let's take a look at the output that we have. So we have full test underscore demo this one is a faster one so when the person falls down it will activate the fall detection one and the same thing in various instances great so that is it for this lecture i hope you enjoyed it and in the next lecture what we're going to be focusing on is yoga pose estimation now this is not going to be using the normal angles of the arms in order to identify certain poses nope it's not going to be that 
it's going to be using LSTMs for deep neural network classification of the poses. We're going to feed in the features and the features will identify whether it is a certain pose. So if you want to watch that lecture, you can check it right up here.